I'm here in Dallas and I'm talking with Murray Camp, who is a vicious lawyer. And he has got an aquarium that's full of nice, friendly, reef safe stuff. I don't understand. So let's talk with him more and get to know who he is. Murray, you recently wrote an article specifically for Coral Magazine about being burned out. Right. So how did you get burned out? Well... And are we talking about aquariums or was it your job? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was probably a little bit of everything at the time, but it was about managing your hobby in the context of uh, what else is going on in your life. And it, in writing this article kind of gave me an opportunity to go back and really examine why I stepped away from the hobby seven or eight years ago, uh, kind of identify some of those factors and decided recently to get back in the hobby, but didn't want to end up in the same place. So I was able to kind of identify some of the reasons I left and, and try and design an approach uh, for re-engagement with the hobby that minimized the risk of burnout in the future. Okay, so specifically, you had too many tanks. Yeah, <laughs> I had multi-tank syndrome. I, at one point, I had as many as six. Um, and I was, you know, including, you know, I had, ran a non-photo tank for a while mm -hmm. that was sort of one of the tanks that you would wake up in the morning and walk by, and then you would just go, oh, because you just knew what you were going to have to do with that tank. Yeah, you can't ignore it. You can't ignore it. And I was putting just massive amounts of, I put so much food in the system that the skimmer wouldn't work because it claimed, it changed the surface tension of the seawater. Right. So, so, you know, those kind of love feeding levels and all that problem. And it was great. I had some growth on, on non photogorgonians had some sponges do well, had a basket star that I documented some growth on. But at the end of the day, it was just too much. It was like running a public aquarium or yeah. something. So, um, and some other tanks that were real high maintenance. So, so that was part of it. Another part was when I left, I, I was just not comfortable where the industry was in terms of aquaculture and captive bred livestock. Um, you know, there were, there were some people doing it and, and, and not in a very coordinated effort. I think the... <sighs> I think the, the emphasis has, has gotten better. I, I like at least, I think the market has imposed some conditions that, um, you know, has, has forced people to really take a hard look at aquaculture. And I think that's inevitably where we're going. Um, so I, I just felt a little bit that we were in a little bit better position and I didn't have as much pause for concern, I think. So in this new system that I set up, uh, I really wanted to, you know, try and focus on, not exclusively, but, you know, an emphasis on captive bred and aquaculture livestock. At this point, we have got lots of choices for captive bred fish, which makes it a lot easier to stock a tank with, uh, without taking from the oceans. Uh, we will probably never get to the point where we can just have anything out of the ocean because there are some limitations, but it does seem like they're cracking the code all the time. Is that one of the things that enticed you to come back? Did you hear there was more captive bred fish? Well, I started looking into it, and, and that certainly piqued my interest. I, I think, you know, the fishes is, we've cracked so many, as you said, codes on how to successfully reproduce these fish in a captive closed system. Um, and, and I think now it's really market dynamics are going to drive, you know, force those, those, those captive fish to take a bigger part of the market. Um, and so that was certainly, you know, one thing that interests me, you know, on the coral and invertebrate side, you know, that was always even sort of ahead of fishes in terms of its aquaculture potential, because we know how to grow coral so much easier now. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it, 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 those all kind of came together as, as why I got back in the hobby. All right. And you used to have a big tank. How big? Uh, the biggest one I ran was like 120 gallons. I never run, I, well, a long time ago, uh, probably in 96, I was involved in my law firm. We, we set up two 600 gallon acrylic tanks. Uh, I'm no longer with that firm anymore, but the tanks are still there and I drop by and see them every once in a while. And that was a real, that was kind of my first really big system to get involved with. And this is the days of a thousand pounds of live rock and a six foot skimmer and off you go, right? Yeah. I mean, true Berlin fil filtration. Right. Um, and one was a reef and one was a fish only. Um, had some st you know, fits and starts with that, <laughs> um, including some fun stories. But, uh, you know, that kind of 
that was my exposure to really big systems, and mm -hmm. I didn't want to get into that kind of volume range again. Mm -hmm. I think I'm most comfortable in tanks under 100 gallons and, and comfortable now. Uh, you know, really like nanos, I've always liked nanos. And, and it's, there's so many options in terms of good all-in-one systems. We've got filtration nailed down. Um, one thing that really got me excited was the availability of a ready of a, or much easier accessibility to live phytoplankton and copepod cultures. Mm -hmm. You know, now even through subscription service. Um, and, you know, you want to suck up some nutrients in a volume of seawater, put some live plants in it. You know, so um, I, I think that's really excited. I think, you know, having a, a robust copepod population and a way to actually maintain it as opposed to just worrying about it or switching out live rock, kind of the older methods of doing it are real exciting. So with a robust, robust copepod population coupled with what live phytoplankton brings to the table, I think that's a real exciting development. So you were burned out before, you abandoned all those tanks, and now how are you going to avoid being burnt out this time? What, what got you, was it, I wanna know what got you back in and how you're gonna avoid getting burnt out again because we can't accept that. Uh, um, uh, what got me back in, I don't know. Well, I'll tell you specifically, we were watching a um, documentary, in a, I think it was an Attenborough documentary on coral reefs and mm -hmm. I don't know. I guess I, Mark, I just missed my fishy friends. Yeah. Um, and, and I really, you know, was, was excited about some of these developments. Excited, of course, we talked about live phytoplankton. Um, and then I, I really was also excited about what I consider to be a fairly important shift in the live rock industry. And that is a lot, you know, shipping maricultured live rock submerged. Mm -hmm. And you get so much less in faunal die off with that. And, and I've had as much fun just sticking live rock in the system and seeing what happens. Mm -hmm. And that really connected me to some of the reasons I got involved in the hobby in the first place. It's just seeing what, what nature will throw out there. Yeah, the little bits of life that come off the rock. That's right. And, uh, I, you know, I, I thought I would be in a huge rush to stock this tank, yeah. start throwing stony corals in it, um, and I'm just not. I'm, I'm really enjoying seeing what the, what the existing livestock are going to do. I think we've got pretty good nutrient balance. I, I'm, observationally, it seems like I've, I've got a good enough po uh, copepod population that's actually reducing some of the chitomorpha as opposed to me having to, to physically harvest it so much, mm -hmm. which is a nice balance. If I can keep that balance, I'll be in good shape. And the catamorpha is growing in the back of that all-in-one aquarium. Right, right. It's, Can't even tell from the front. Yeah. Like, there's nothing happening. I know, yeah, it's, it's neat. All I did was cut a square in the film in the back and then double side t uh, mounted uh, LED fixture back there. I've got it on a reverse daylight cycle. Um, and it's working great. No skimmer. I, mean, I am running carbon and some uh, physical, some filter floss, and that's uh -huh. it. I love a simple tank. Do you think that at some point, or is, for, are, is this the tank for 2023, or do you think you might expand? Can I take the fifth on that one? <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, this tr the tank you picked was that picked specifically for your court for that office area yes you're yeah. like i can't take anything bigger than this this is what needs to fit that room right and also what i could fit on that table if i wanted to use it as an aquarium stand yeah so you know it took me to some research and ikea back catalogs and that kind of thing right. but um that was the main limiting factor on on that one is i wanted a true desktop yeah so what's going to go in the tank next? What's your plan? Well, I'm, I'm next is to install an ATO. And once I get that, you know, situated, then I'll start stocking more seriously with corals. I'm going to really focus on encrusting corals. So a lot of Sephastria, some Samacora, uh, chalices, Oxypora, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what I'm going to focus on. But I'm also going to let it kind of evolve, you know. Not what about too. other fish? Are you going to keep it where you're at? I'm real happy with the fish. I've got a, you know, a little a blue grandma, a, a, the, you know, Dallas's most overweight blue neon goby, and uh, a Rainsford goby, and it's just a good dynamic. I, yeah. I, I don't like tanks that 
have so many fish in them. It's just, you could tell, you know, those fish are every day, all the time on edge. They're, they're trying to defend their territory and, and I've got a good dynamic now. So I think I'm just going to go with that. And right now, what's your favorite hitchhiker that came in on that live rock? Man, I've got a lot of porcelain crabs. Uh -huh. um, they came in as hitchhikers. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, one has gotten really big. Um, and I'll sit there and watch them for, a, for ages. That's just a pretty amazing adaptation. But, you know, the, the file clams are really interesting. Um, uh, really great sponges. I'm, I'm dosing Sponge Power, a product from KZ called Carl and Zook. Mm -hmm. I've had some luck with sponges using that before. It's a dissolved organic carbon. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, and I'm dosing, dosing sorry, dosing live phyto. So mm -hmm. hopefully we can keep those clams going. And what are those sponges that are in the rock? Yeah, uh, spice, uh, I'm going to have to mispronounce it, <laughs> siponophid. Uh -huh. They're a boring sponge, a small boring sponge that actually b boros, uh, bores tubes into yeah. the into the rock. And they're, there's mil you know, lots of them. Yeah, I've so. never seen that before. That yeah. was really neat. I love seeing new things. Yeah, it's great. I love live rock. I still always wanted to do a tank with only, li you know, just stick some live rock in there and see what happens over two years. Got right in your way, didn't I? Food? Food. Feeding a mixture of uh, LRS, Nano Frenzy, and Cool Mysis. It's going into the drain. Uh, that's <laughs> cool Mysis um, flake for the pig. The fish are finding it. Do you do any target feeding? Um, for the cut corals and the anemones. Yeah. Is it still frozen or would you use pellet? No, I'm using the same stuff. I'm using, it's just such a clean blend. Or sometimes just mice. Yeah. Stay still. You wiggle too much, the camera switches to macro. Approaching this system, what I'm more focusing on is trying to take sort of a holistic approach. Let the tank evolve, but stick to a plan. Limit volume and number of tanks, obviously, but also just try to reconnect with what got me in the hobby in the first place. You know, identify that and, and you know, really try and, and, and connect with the spark. And for me, it was sort of the daily, you know, dramas that occur among the inhabitants of a reef tank all the time and, and let that evolve. Don't chase, you know, collectors, corals, you know, buy livestock that makes sense for the system as a whole and uh, try and have fun. I like it. Thank you very much, Murray. You bet, Mark. Thank I, you. Appreciate it, buddy. Me in your home. You bet, man. Anytime. I'm glad you came over here. Thank you. As Murray is local to me, I was able to visit him in person to photograph his aquarium for his article about burnout. I love taking pictures, but rarely do I get to see them in print. Be sure to pick up the July-August issue of Coral Magazine now to learn more. Available on melovesreef.com.